So welcome back to another episode of The Stopping Pop. As we are getting ready to watch Game 4 of Boston and Miami, I just want to touch on the game from last night with the Warriors and the Mavericks. And I feel like the Mavericks have run their course. I feel like, you know, it's been a good run for them. It's been a great season into the conference finals, but I don't think the Warriors are going to lose. And the Mavericks just don't have enough talent to stack up against the Warriors. Especially if the Mavericks aren't making their three-pointers, you know, you live and die by the three. So, you got Kleber and Bullock and Bertans, who's probably their three best shooters, really struggle from three against the Warriors. You know, Luca's getting his 30 to 40 points, but can't do it alone. And Brunson's getting his points. Dinwiddie's not looking too good. So, we, you stack up the Warriors against the Mavericks. It's not a good matchup for the Warriors. I mean, for the Mavericks. Only because, you know, they just don't have enough talent. And I want to say that... I don't want to say it's Luca's fault per se, but I can see, you know, like it's a it's a difference between you know every player touching the ball on the offense compared to, you know, like one player dominating the ball and basically you know dribbling the whole time and excuse me, but dribbling the whole time and just um, kicking it out to shooters and just you know having one player set up everybody and run their whole offense compared to how the Warriors run their offense where Draymond can facilitate the offense, Steph can run the offense, you can run the offense through pool at times, you can you can get Clay going, you can get you know get Wiggins going, you know, you have you have multiple weapons on the Warriors team who can go off at any moment and we seen this this story before with you know the Warriors playing against other teams in the past. Basically, um how should I put it? One a one man team like per se like James Harden for instance, you know, back in the Houston days when he was going against the Warriors, it was mostly just James going against essentially K D Steph. Clay, Draymond, come on, like, and granted, you know, those Rockets season wasn't supposed to win those, those, those series against the Warriors, and same thing with the Mavericks right now, the Mavericks are not supposed to win against this Warriors team, this experienced, um, wild oil machine, you know, and honestly, I'm, I, as far as I the Warriors run in these last couple of years. I want to compare them to the Spurs of the early 2000s because the Spurs never really. I don't want to. I don't want to say they're not like a great team, but they never really was like a the clear cut. Oh, they're gonna win it every year, and same with the Warriors with the last couple of seasons. But they always seem to find a way to get back to the finals. And, you know, it's never kind of like a consecutive thing with the Spurs. And because, like, you know, it's been years when they miss the finals and or they go back. They win one, like they win in 05. They don't get back to the finals in 06. They get back in 07 and they win it. And then, you know, they're back in it in 2011. And then, um, sorry, 2012, you know, 2013, 14, they always right there contending. And then they end up winning it again years down the line. So and that's what I want to say with the Warriors. The Warriors, they just don't, I don't know what it is. They don't have back-to-back -back consecutive finals appearances these last couple of years because of the injuries, you know. Clay's going down. Draymond's gone down. Um, Steph missed some significant time. But, like, we need to start putting the Warriors in that that dynasty realm, like we need to start mentioning them as like a dynasty. And I don't hear that that talk 
that word thrown around a lot lately. But I'm starting to think, you know, the Warriors are in that realm as a dynasty, especially if they win it this year. We have to consider them one of the greatest teams in the last, you know, 20 probably years, 10, 15 years, whatever you want to flip it. But all in all, I think that the Warriors are going to win it all. I said it on a previous episode that I feel like the Warriors are going to win the championship this year. And they're going to go up against Miami, which I also want to touch on right now. I think the Heat are... I don't want to say they have the better team than the Celtics because they don't. But talent-wise, the Celtics are better, maybe. But the things in Miami, they're so physical and they get in your face, they get in your jersey, and they they want to they want to play physical with you, and they want to rough you up. And I'm not sure the Celtics can handle that type of physicality over you know the course of a seven game series against Miami. And I could be wrong. Boston could lose, could win it tonight, and then go on to win you know the next you know two games and. But, you know, I'm not quite sure Boston can handle that physicality. Especially since Boston lost the last game with Jason Tatum having a bad shooting night. But also Miami not having Jimmy Jimmy Butler for the second half of that game. So, with them getting Kyle Lowry back, Victor Oladipo with his defensive ability. And then, you know, you can't give up 17 points to P.J. Tucker. Like... We know P.J. Tucker's not a scorer. He's, you know, a scrappy guy. He's going to play defense, hustle, things like that. But you're giving up 17 points to somebody who doesn't even average 10 points, you know? So I'm not sure if Boston will be able to survive that type of hit. But we're going to see how they manage tonight. And then, you know, from there, it's all... Um, best of three at this point if Miami wins it tonight you know we're going to see because it's it's hard to see how good Boston really is because they always get hit with the like some type of ceiling where they can't break through you know like they it's always been like some type of injury or just like some type of miraculous thing that's happening with them and maybe it's youth maybe it's you know inexperienced by them but it's like they've been here these last couple of years so like what is it that they're missing that can really put them over the hump and be like okay these guys are the clear-cut favorite to win it and like and they actually show that they're not just hype they're not just potential they're actual legitimate contenders so we would have to see how that goes tonight. And all in all, um, this has been a very exciting series in, on both conferences. But there's also one more thing I want to touch on. Luka is averaging 32 points for his career in the playoffs. Now, I don't want to go out on a limb and say, you know, he's the best player in this playoffs. But... As a young guy, young player in this league, going out and dro- averaging 32 in each of his playoff runs, it's been really impressive. So I'm not sure. Like, I'm, I'm. He's either ranked first or second behind Michael Jordan for a playoff scoring at this point per per average, but. It's looking like Luka is really going to be, like, go down as one of the greatest playoff scorers ever. And, you know, and probably arguably one, the, if not the best European player ever to play in the NBA. But it's been it's been fun to watch him play. And it's been really admirable how he's been able to carry this team this far at this point in his career. Because, you know, this... This guy is pretty young, even though he's played a lot of basketball over his career, played professionally since he's a teenager. But it's been really 
amazing to see and we have to like uh, i know this is not the finished product for dallas so i don't want to say like this is like their their peak you know i don't want to say like all right this is like this is it like they're they they they're done you know like i feel like they're really starting to put it together and like even though they have probably reached their ceiling in this playoffs this is not their ceiling for Luca's career you know there's plenty of years to go just gotta get him some more help gotta get some more consistency from the other players on his team and he's I guess he's still learning to find that balance and wow I just got an update that Marcus Smart will miss tonight's game with an ankle injury yeah this is gonna that's gonna really hurt Boston's chances for trying to try to beat Miami tonight because their defensive player of the year, their point guard is out. That's it's not looking too good for them. But yeah, I mean, let's get ready to watch this game and let's see how everything goes.